Hello, Theo Traders. This is Gianni DePoche, and today is the 12th of March, 2024, and I want to review some charts with you. Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ saw some initial selling uh, in the morning, but we're coming back so far, and we could be shaping up for another nice close. We did just have some contract rollovers uh, in the futures markets uh, for the equity indices, so we are now trading uh, June. So I have a chart of the continuous contract here in the s and I'm going to jump over to June because I think it paints a better picture, you know. Uh, in the continuous contract, it looks like we made a new all-time high. Uh, but you look at June here, we still have not made a new all-time high. Now, we could be on the cusp of closing at a new high in the June contract, which uh, is a good thing because I like to give greater weight to closing prices than intraday prices. But Still maintain the outlook that we are late in some very important cycles and due uh, for a pullback uh, of minor significance. I would argue that I I'm more looking along the lines of a period of sideways price action, uh, you know, because if you look at what's going on in tech and semiconductors still up, doesn't look like there's any meaningful topping formations. You can go ahead and even look at NVIDIA, which is up another 5% today. But to me, uh, even a stock like this, I think, is due for some congestion and some sideways price action. You also have Super Micro Computer, uh, which is catching another nice bid up almost 7% on the day. So uh, wherever we look around in the tech space, it's not really looking all that bad. And of the Magnificent Seven, the only one I'm really uh, cautious on right now is Tesla. I think that we just broke down uh, from a bear flag and the base downside target I have for Tesla is 160. And if that uh, is broken to the downside, I'm looking for Tesla to drop as low as 100, and that could be pretty significant um, and also present a potentially generational buying opportunity. But in terms of you know good risk-reward opportunities to the upside right now, I do like the idea of Apple. Um, and really, if we just start closing below uh, the low here from October, I think the route could be a lot more substantial, not just in Apple, but in the, in the overall stock market. Since this is such an important uh, individual stock for the overall market, I think we have a good risk-reward ratio to the upside here because I am looking at some longer-term patterns that suggest a substantially higher move in Apple. And not just in Apple, but in Google as well. So we did put out some alerts to get long, uh, both Apple and Google last week. And so far, those are working out. But even if we look at across the other uh, parts of that Magnificent Seven, you know, Microsoft, Symmetrical Triangle, that is not a bearish price pattern. You look, you can look at Meta, still flagging within its bull flag. Looks like it wants to have another attempt higher. And even Netflix, you know, continues to display uh, residual consolidation after impressive moves. Amazon as well. None of these look like topping formations. So again, I think the base case to reset some cyclical factors in stocks is for the market to just go sideways. And as a rule, a market that co corrects through time instead of price is more bullish than a market that corrects through price instead of time. Uh, crypto finally seeing some selling. Bitcoin hit a new all-time high today. Um, you know, There's been a couple instances when I thought we were about to start a more substantial pullback, but I am looking for you know, perhaps it dropped back into the $50,000 area. Uh, it is very extended and I'm starting to have some uh, an anecdotal um, bits of evidence that a high of significance is uh, either very close to completion or already complete because, you know, some people are starting to ask me that are not really in the trading and financial community, uh, you know, what's going on with Bitcoin. So that's usually a high, uh, a, a sign that a high of significance is near. Uh, Ethereum also made a new high, not a new all-time high. Uh, coming down on the day, but you look at some of these uh, crypto uh, related names like MicroStrategy continue to explode uh, higher. Coinbase, we wrapped up a trade on that a couple of weeks ago, still looking uh, good overall. But uh, some names that I still have in the books and I'm still uh, pleased with performance include names like Celsius, uh, up a nice four and a half percent on the day. Uh, that's been doing pretty well, but uh, I'm still intrigued on what's going on in the AI space and, you know, still have positions. Uh, in names like Samsara, which had a nice earnings report. We had a big, uh, potentially bullish breakaway gap above resistance of this rectangle formation. Still hasn't reached our upside price objective, but what that breakout did allow us to do is to manage risk more effectively. So we have a nice uh, unrealized gain on Samsara right now, and I'm looking for that strength uh, in the AI space to permeate 
uh, into other names in the sector that I'll share with you in just in a moment here. But I do like what's going on in Sam Sarah as well. And just tech overall. I mean, uh, I'm going to look at bonds today too, because bonds uh, are selling off. We had a hotter than uh, expected inflation report that sent bond yields higher, but I think that might only be temporary. So part of my bullishness on tech resides in the probability that I think interest rates will continue to fall uh, for the next few months before, you know, ultimately forming a high in the summer. So I uh, also picked up a position on C3.ai uh, about a week ago. Uh, and basically, we were looking to buy in a retest of former resistance turn support of the surrounding bottom formation. So got a stop loss here and a close below 29.69. We almost uh, traded below that this morning, but rebounded. So we'll see uh, how that shakes out. But, you know, you, it's one of those things. You get stopped out, you get stopped out. Um, if IoT works out, but AI doesn't, that that's fine by me because we did just pick up another AI-related trade, Opera Limited, a Norwegian uh, browsing internet browser company that apparently is making some, some substantial investments in the AI space. Uh, noted this potential breakout from a rounding bottom on Friday. That's when we initiated long uh, trades on this. And uh, also noted that there's a substantial short interest in this stock. So to me, that is noteworthy uh, because in this uh, high flying market environment, we know that squeezes can unfold pretty quickly. And, you know, IOT was a pretty, pretty heavily shorted name. Celsius was a pretty heavily shorted name as well. So, you know, a lot of those heavily shorted names that we've been buying lately on breaks of key technical resistance have resolved to the upside. So I would look for that to continue uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, CrowdStrike, uh, internet security company, been long this, keep tightening up stop losses on that, really can't complain. They had a nice earnings report last week, faded off that uh, initial pop, but since it's uh, holding those gains, uh, I like what's going on here. Keep an eye on Sentinel-1 as well. Uh, we did put out some trade parameters on this in the Theo Trade chat room, and it is uh, holding up all right. Did look like we completed another higher low, and I am uh, liking the stock as kind of a piggyback trade on what's going on uh, in CrowdStrike. Now let's go ahead and jump over to the bottom market. We're going to look at uh, the June contract like we have uh, in uh, stocks. But what I see here is, you know, you had this breakout from a rounding bottom uh, here in the 30-year bond. Uh, and it looks like we're coming back down to retest former resistance turn support. And you might say, well, Gianni, we're below that now. Well, keep in mind that support and resistance levels, they're zones more so than hard lines. So we are testing that now. And I'm keen on this holding because if not, I think it's going to impact the bullish precious metal trade that we had uh, from a couple of weeks ago uh, as well. So you can see here that 10 year notes also coming back down, but getting a little bit of a bid here uh, as we move towards, uh, we've got about uh, an hour, 20 minutes left before the settlement in uh, Chicago on the CME for bonds. So we'll see how we close, but uh, I think to maintain our bullish bond outlook, we do need to uh, complete another higher low with respect to the trend at some point this week, preferably uh, no later than Wednesday, but we'll see. We do have PPI numbers uh, on Thursday. Uh, I do want to check in on precious metals because we're finally starting to see some selling in gold and silver been bullish on the precious metal uh, asset class for a few weeks now. Uh, we did issue a back up the truck rating on some precious metal names. Mentioned that in uh, last week's video as well. Silver hit a new high today, but pulling back. I do think that silver will eventually have its day in the sun. But, uh, you know, you look at some of these precious metal names that we've been long, like Anglo Ashanti, despite being down today, we are well off the lows of the day. And I think that speaks to the bullish pressures that are still present in this sector. And that should be respected because I think we're still early. And I think it's going to follow the precious metal sector. The potential rally will follow uh, a rally in bonds because, you know, the Fed still hasn't even started cutting rates yet. The only thing that could throw a wrench in those plants is crude oil. Uh, we are still pressing up against resistance here at 78.80. I would prefer to see it hold and eventually complete a lower high and break lower at this point. Uh, so I have a couple price patterns drawn here, either a rounding bottom or an ascending channel. I do favor the ascending channel interpretation right now. And that is a continuation pattern. And we've been in a downtrend in crude oil for about two years. So just something to keep in mind here as um, you know, markets do seem to be at a big inflection point. Uh, and I think it really comes down to inflation and interest rates right now. If rates come down, I think stocks can continue higher. But if rates start to tick back higher, I think it's going to be a major headwind for stocks. So that's all that I wanted to cover with you today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope to see you in the Theo Trade chat room. See you next time.